Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to a new series. And today we are going to be playing Test Drive Unlimited PS2 Edition. If you guys do want to keep up to date with the TDU PS2 series, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll be kept up to date with all of the latest videos. And don't forget to check out our social links down in the description down below. But hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video. Right, so today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be playing Test Drive Unlimited PlayStation 2 Edition. Now, this game is a simplified version of the uh, next-gen console for this. Um, so the PS3 and the 360 version. But the difference is I actually prefer the PS2 and the PlayStation Portable version of Test Drive Unlimited. Just because of the fact that it took out the boring missions that were in uh, the 360 and the PS3 version. And that's why I prefer this game. And there's obviously so many more features in this. But we'll talk about that once we've done with the cutscene. The passengers for flight 6814 to Honolulu are asked to please present themselves for boarding at gate C. Ladies and gentlemen, please have your passports and boarding passes ready for inspection. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be shortly commencing our descent into Honolulu. The temperature on the ground is 77 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies and 55% humidity. I ask you to fasten your seatbelt, please. And here we go. We are here in Hawaii. It's a very nice place. Is it one of the best game maps I have ever played? Like Hawaii. And especially Test Drive Unlimited 2 with Ibiza. That was very good. Test Drive Unlimited always does good maps. And I'm looking forward to seeing where TDU Solar Crown is going to be based. Based on the fact that it's been confirmed it's another one-to-one -one scale map. Which is going to be insane. But here we go. We are here at the V-Rent Renter Car. Hawaii Car Rentals. Okay, so we have a very nice choice of cars here. Aloha, and welcome to Ohio. Car rentals have a range of vehicles that can be rented for 30 or 60 minute periods to get a feel of for different types of cars without having to pay showroom prices. So I think this is like the extended test drives where you pay for cars, give them a try. Um, we have a choice of different cars. Obviously, we've got one of each class from D, C, B, and A. I think there's an E class as well. 
Um, the fact is, I want to try and avoid using cards that I played um, in my playthrough when I was little that I can remember. Um, so I think I'm going to go for the Dodge Viper SRT 10 for this one. We're going to give this a try. Uh, 189 miles an hour, 4 seconds, and 500 brake horsepower. Um, we can also take a look with the camera, have a look at the car. Um, oh, we can hold square to zoom out. That's good. We can open up the doors, drop the windows. And you can even stop the windows midway like you can in Test Drive. But yeah, we'll take the uh, Dodge Viper for this one. And we'll rent it for 30 minutes. Don't quite need 60. Your itinerary is being recalculated. Alright. 29 minutes on the timer. It's counting down already. Time to put your selection through its paces. Follow the route marked in Cyan on your GPS to reach the challenge. Let's go to the challenge. Oh. To be honest though, the engines don't sound too bad for a game that came out in 2006. I think this was 2006. Oh, well, that didn't go well. <laughs> I definitely know I probably won't pick this car again in my walkthrough if I spin out like that. <laughs> right, here we go. Load him. This is where the rubber hits the road. In challenges, you earn master points and credits. These unlock new challenges and allow you to purchase houses, vehicles, and performance upgrades. This is where people sort of grew their love for test drive with the purchasing houses and doing all the upgrades and that. It was like real life. It wasn't just a racing game. It was sort of more down to earth, more normal. Right, here we go, off the start line. I haven't uh, managed to find out if there is a uh, manual transmission mode, but if there is, I probably will swap to it, because uh, I quite like playing in manual transmission at the moment, really liking it, especially Gran Turismo, ah, oh, it's so nice, playing with manual, it's just like I have all the power of this car between my hands, or legs if you've got a uh, steering wheel. I don't. I can't afford a steering wheel for PS2 at the moment. Awesome. This is looking good. This is looking really good. 51.424 seconds so far. There we go. Come on. Drifting around these corners. Um, I think I might go for this camera angle, actually. Um, it's a little bit more of a comfortable viewing angle for me. Especially when you're driving through traffic and over hills and that, you sort of get a slid, uh, slightly better view. Like that, that's a blind hill. You wouldn't be able to see that on the back view for much longer. There we go, we came first. Against two Aston Martin DB9s, but one was a coupe and one was a uh, soft top. Very nice. And uh, the AC427, which I think is the Shelby Cobra, but the original, not the Shelby version. Right, so it's time to purchase our own set of wheels. Choose between the three dealerships. Okay, so we have a choice of Ford, Saturn, or Alfa Romeo. So Ford, by the looks of it, only offers the Ford Mustang GT. Uh, Saturn offers the Sky Roadster, and Alfa Romeo offers the GTV6. So normally I've sort of gotten with a Ford Mustang when I was younger, when I played this. So I think I'm going to go for the Alfa Romeo GTV6 for this walkthrough. I know, unconventional choice. But uh, we're going to go for it anyways. Your itinerary is being GPS has plotted the route to the dealership. Follow the sign marker. Make your way there. I think that's what I said. I skipped it too soon. This is interesting though because um, with PS2, for some reason, it outputs only in uh, four to three ratio, uh, which is like, uh, which is like old style, um, which is where the uh, quality problems are coming with the recording. 
Um, but all, my TV stretches it to uh, 16 by 9. Um, so Gran Turismo isn't a problem. You can set the screen mode to 16 by 9 and everything looks normal. Um, but this game doesn't have a 16 by 9 mode. So technically, this is just a stretched image of the 4 by 3. Um, and yeah, if you look at the speedo, it looks very stretched. But when you look at the recorded footage, it looks round. It's weird. You have reached your destination. But we are here at Alfa Romeo. Let's go. We're going to uh, buy our first car. Let's have a look. See what Alfa Romeo actually offers in this game. Um, they didn't have sort of like country dealerships. It was all um, individual brands in this game. Which was a little bit better, personally, for me. Right, so we have the choice of the Alfa Romeo 8C Competizione. Uh, to be able to purchase this car, you must play first in all of the round of golf races. So those are championships. Certain cars are unlocked, uh, locked behind championships. But some cars are actually locked behind clubs as well. Um, so looking forward to getting into some of those clubs as well. Um, we have a choice of a couple of wheels. I feel like these ones are best. The 18-inch spokes. What colours do we have? We have a nice red. We have a nice blue there. Blue Daytona. I feel like let's go for a red. Rossa Alpha. Oh, and we got interior customization as well. This is another extra feature of um, TDU PS2 that the PSP version didn't have. Right, let's buy that car. 38,000 credits. Yeah, so the game has uh, fully mapped interiors as well, which is another cool thing that you don't see in a lot of games for this age. Gran Turismo 4 doesn't even have mapped interiors, and that game's supposed to be insane. Uh, so you will need a garage to store your vehicle, drive to the retail, re real tour. Oh, that's a weird word. And select a house. Drive to the real estate agents. Let's do this. Come on. Uh, I'm not going down that way because I know that is a wrong way down the road. I've played this game plenty of times to know that. Game. I'm going the right way down the road. I'm going legally. Uh, use these buttons to access the auxiliary menus. Okay, so uh, what does up do? Up is the windows. Oh, yeah. Another cool thing that this game has that PSP didn't have is a look camera. Okay, there we go. So windows are down. Oh, that's not great. What's this button do? Driving mode. Okay. So we have a choice of traction control on... Two, one, or off. I'll probably put it on there. At the next so you press that to look that way, that Turn to look right. that way, and then that to look back. I did not know that. Your destination is okay, that's pretty away. neat. I quite like that. I'm going to use that quite a lot. Get out of my way. Um, what's the bottom button do? Okay, so this is radio. So this is a test drive soundtrack. There's different stations as well. Pretty cool. Uh, I think I'll stick with TDU soundtrack for now. And then press this button to cycle through camera views. Your destination yep. Is 1.5 miles away. I prefer this one though. Just gets that extra little bit of view. Extra bit of viewing angle. Turns me into a professional race driver. Here we go. We're a mile away from the real estate agent. Your destination is We're gonna get ourselves away. a nice new house. We're going to be living in Hawaii. Right. Can we get airtime? Oh, we got a little bit of airtime. This car's hitting 157 miles an hour. That's pretty impressive for an Alpha. Though, to be fair, you've got the Alpha AC. I forgot about that. <laughs> Here we go, though. At the real estate agent's. The real tour. Let's see, what have you got for me to live in? Select a house. Remember, you can buy more luxurious and spacious places as well as garages as you earn more credits. Okay. Right, so at the moment we have Wafu Village and Milani Heaven of Peace. I think we can only get Wah Wapahu Village. Th these are all like really 
like foreign names. So I struggled to say these <laughs> quite a lot. Um, I think this game has like hundreds of houses. There's so many more houses in this game than actually um, Test Drive Unlimited for the Xbox 360 and that. There's more houses in this Your game and also more uh, houses than Test Drive Unlimited 2 as well. But we're going to make our way to our new house. Let's go. It's still raining outside. Heavy. Heavy rain. Go, 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 go. Nice. Your destination is a half a mile away. Your destination is a half a mile away. Turn right. Turn right. What are you doing? <laughs> that was just a light tap and the car just gets flung off to the side. There is um, also police in this game as well. Um, but they are an absolute nightmare. You can do literally nothing and they will come for you. Here you go. Very nice. We are here at our house. Are you not going to drive in the garage? Oh, gutted. I wanted to see a cool animation of him like, no, in the garage. Now you're all set. Your house provides you with a garage where you can store your cars. You'll receive messages in the news section and can track your progress in statistics. Right, so we have uh, congratulations on the purchase of a new home in Ohio. The island has a lot to offer for both novice and experienced racers. Once you leave the house, you'll find many challenges throughout the island to test your skills, as well as many shops and spots to purchase new cars and upgrades. The island is yours to explore. Cool. We're going to delete that. Uh, so we've been invited to race a Club Italia at the Six Shooters Club, which I think is, I'm guessing, V6 engines only. Like, that's the only thing that makes sense. Like, I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean revolvers. <laughs> uh, you've been invited to race at the GT Racers Club. Well, our car's got that in the name, so I guess that makes sense. And Club E for the class that we got. Decent. Okay. So we got some pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, statistics. The shows, cuts, stuff one. Cool. Um, and then we go to the garage to select our car. Right, we are going to select this, the Alfa Romeo. Thank you. And we're going to drive out. We're going to take our car and start some races. Your itinerary is being I think we're just going to do normal races for today. Um, but then we can progress up um, into other stuff. Right, let's take a look at the map. Here's the uh, map, the big bad map. Uh, so yes, we've got quite a few races all around us for now. Oh, we've actually got loads to start off with. Um, the one cool thing about this game is it would auto uh, set you a waypoint after you finish an event to go straight to another your race that's compatible with your car. So you would just like finish a race and you'd be straight into another car, uh, into another event. You just drive to the next one. At the next intersection, turn right. Turn um, towards right. the north of the map. Oh, there you go. See what I mean? <laughs> you crash and the cops are after you. Um, but yeah, there is so many events towards the south, but towards the north, they get uh, a little bit more scarce. But then as well, there's also a load of uh, twisty, windy roads up there. These are sort of more uh, square corner roads. Here we go. Heart starter, this race is called. Let's have a look. So... We have a choice of three difficulties. Uh, I think for this walkthrough, we're going to stick to normal. Uh, so this offers us um, more rewards as you sort of go up. Um, so for gold, you get 8,750 credits. So let's do this. This is a two lap race, one and a half miles. It's our time to shine with our little Alfa Romeo. I think as well, at some point, we're going to have to uh, find the Italian upgrade store. Again, you can't just go to an upgrade tuner shop and just upgrade your car. You had to go to one that specialised in your country. So either Italian cars or V6 cars, something like that. You had to go to specialists. And that's what was cool. You had to find these things. You had to explore. Exploration was the key for this game. That was a very, very wide corner. 
But we got a better exit than the, uh, I think that's a GT500 Shelby. I think it is. Turn left. Awesome. No, he's got the heads. Oh, what are you doing? That was toxic. That was toxicity on another level. Start slowing down a little bit earlier. Make sure we get around the corners, preferably. I mean, that's what most race drivers aim to do, is get around corners, not uh, crash out of them. Got that. Shelby trying to get right up behind us there. I would be so embarrassed if that's not a Shelby, and I've just been calling it a Ford Shelby for this, like, whole time. Awesome. Where are we going? Where are we going? Okay, here. Turn left. There's another thing they added to this game as well compared to the PS2. There's little things that they added to this game on the PS2 um, that made it just that bit better. Um, one of the things they did add was the uh, sort of barriers that um, tells you what direction to go that blocks the road. I don't think those are in the PSP version. But it would have been too big of a game to fit on a 1.5 gigabyte disc. Ah, it is a Shelby. It's a Shelby GT500 trademark. <laughs> and there was another Alfa Romeo as well. We were about six seconds faster than them, so decent. And we got some master points as well. I think the master points is how you sort of progress through the game. The more points you get, the more. So you didn't actually have to do races to uh, unlock stuff. It's pretty cool. The next intersection, turn left. All right, turn let's left. go down here. Oh no! Breaking the speed limit sign. That takes breaking the speed limit to a whole new level. All right, here we go. Next race, let's enter. Right, so we are here at the turnbuckle. This is a 1.4 mile per lap race for two laps, and we're gonna get ourselves 8,000 credits. If we win, groovy. Right, please wait. Load it. Okay, let's do this. It's our time to shine. And off we go. At the next intersection, turn left. Okay, the other car's got a much better lead. We sort of uh, crashed into one of the Alfa Romeo GT cars. We are still in last place, but hopefully we can get that slipstream. Have we got a slipstream yet? Apparently not. No. We're sliding past the first of the GT V6s there, uh, and a Ford Mustang as well. And the other GT V6 has gone very wide. And we're coming past a Ford uh, GT350, I think it might be. Don't hold me down on that one, though. I'm not very uh, confident on my uh, classic muscle cars. My knowledge isn't perfect. Okay, they're coming up to the next tight corner. We made it around there very nicely. We've got another Ford in front of us. We've got to catch up with them. We've got a Ford trying to overtake us from behind as well. You can stay back, my guy. No! Right, quick. Flick it round, flick it round, get some speed. We'll take a third place then. I can't believe that though. That Mustang tapped us in the back. You can't see it because of the fact that the hitbox is like massive on these cars. It's ridiculous. But he was so close to me. If he didn't hit me then, oh well. But like, I swear he tapped me. I 
Oh wow, looks like we're coming out with a third place. Oh dear. Oh, it's a Shelby GT500. They were both Shelbys. Nice. Six seconds behind. Come on. That was some toxicity then. Your itinerary is being recalculated. Okay, we got our next race as well to go to. I am aiming for 100% playthrough. But um, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, how this game works if it's like you have to get gold on everything and unlock every car to get 100% playthrough. Or whether it's just complete all the events, I'm not sure. Because I know Gran Turismo 4 is like get gold on every event, but you don't need every car. This is uh, slightly different, I think. You have reached your destination. Right, we're at the destination. We are doing the Kahala time trial now. Let's do this. Time trials are also a really fun thing to do in this game. A time trial is a race against the clock. Your goal is to beat the class record for this event. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Uh, 2.4 miles for a one lap. So I think this is a straight line. Um, this doesn't have a difficulty. But you have to beat a time. Um, so for 15,500, you have to do a 142. The reason I used to love time trials when I was a kid was because I played on easy difficulty in the races. So for like a 10 mile race, you'd only earn yourself 10,000. But for a 10 mile time trial, you'd earn yourself 40,000. So you'd actually be earning a lot more on easy difficulty if you were playing. And you actually did a decent job. That was a decent start. That was a really decent start. The cool thing as well with this game is you have these points in the corner. So as you drive, you build up points. Um, you complete events, you build up points. When you get to... I think it was 100,000, you go up from rookie to amateur. Then 250, then 500, then um, a million. You get to like the maximum five-star level. But... I am not 100% sure. It's been a long time. At least 10 years since i played this. 10 years. Why have I not bought a PS2 sooner? I have no idea why I haven't bought this sooner. Perfect. Where is this going down? Onto the highway. Cool. This is wow. Roads that go over other roads in a game with a map the size of like 40 miles each way. Fitting on a DVD that, if it's dual layer, gives you a maximum of 8 gigabytes file space. Which is pretty impressive. And they had this fit on a compact disc. Which is the same as what GameCube ran off of. And it's what made the UMD discs in PSPs. But I think the UMDs might have been even smaller compact discs. They might have been slightly smaller, again. Um, only about 1.5 gigabytes you can fit on a PSP disc. We've got a bronze medal. Ooh, not great. Not a great start. Your itinerary is but uh, at some point we should be able to uh, upgrade our car. Get ourselves a better one. We've got another event over here. At the next intersection, turn left. Turn left. Turn left. Oh, crap. Two police cars. Not great. Start any beef with them and both of them will start coming for us. Right, so we're doing the Manulani loop. Uh, this is 0 0.9 miles per lap, but it's two laps. 6,250 credits. Um, some of these events do sort of like auto select like um, same make. This is definitely not same make because there's uh, Shelby GT500s in this. I'm not going to make the mistake of calling it the wrong thing again. A decent start ish. Did crash into that full Mustang, which slowed us down big time. Come on, let's do this. Obviously, the first few races are going to be a little bit crap, because they always are. It's difficult to drive a 
slower car and win. Especially this one. This one seems to be turning really wide. This is an unusually wide turning angle for a car. I shouldn't have to slow down this much. Test drive, it's an arcade game. Awesome. Sticking it to the inside of the corner there. See if we can grab the slipstream of that GT500, but I don't think we can, unfortunately. Hey, that's that's karma for uh, spinning me out before. You deserve that, big time. Got 127 drift points there. And he's gone out. He's gone wide. We've taken the lead so far. There's a finish line. Finish line just around this corner. There are also uh, other modifier factors as well for these races. We'll see some of them in, at some point. But some of the races do get very difficult because they add uh, modifiers to them. Your itinerary is being recalculated. Where is the next race? 0 0.6 miles away. That's not... Jeez, there are so many races in such a small space at this start. Your destination is a half a mile away. Half a mile away. All right. Oh, that's not ideal. <laughs> that <laughs> that arrow sign just went fly. Oh shit! Uh oh. If you crash into a car while the cops are near you, they will instantly chase you. But uh, for some reason, extra cops don't start chasing. Oh, no, never mind. They do apparently. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, make sure to hit that join button or click on the merch link in the description. It would mean the world to me. And also, don't forget to check in the description for our other social links. We've got Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. So make sure to follow us over on there. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.